soaps to some in today's video we're looking at making a shaving soap. This is a shaving soap puck I've made um, and I'll give you the recipe and all the ingredients you need in order to make this one. It uses a dual lye system so that's using both potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide and I'll run you through all the steps of how to make that using a hot process. Without further ado let's get to the video. So what we've got going into the uh, pot here is some stearic acid. Now stearic acid is important for a dense, creamy, stable lava. So it's not really something you can emit from a shaving soap. Next up we have lard. Now lard contains palmitic and stearic acids and a decent amount of oleic and it gives a conditioning and moisturising to the bar. Third in we've got some cocoa butter. Now cocoa butter and any of the kind of mango, cocoa or shea butters contribute good stearic amounts and give it a good creaminess. So you can see stearic features in this a lot. So we've got both cocoa butter and shea butter going into this recipe. Next up is coconut oil. Now coconut oil needs to be in there to give it um, a help to work with the lather, but you don't want too much coconut oil in there. And finally, we've got some castor oil. It gives a really nice conditioning, creamy and stable lather. So what we're going to do is get all of those in. Um, and here is the recipe. So you can pause that now if you want and you can uh, just write those down. Now do remember you do need to put this through a soap calculator in order to get that um, recipe correct. So as I say this is a dual lye soap. So 60% of our lye solution is going to be potassium hydroxide and the remaining 40% is going to be the uh, sodium hydroxide. Now this is a starting point. You can tweak those and add a bit more um, sodium hydroxide and a little less potassium if you wanted a harder bar, but a 60-40 split is a really good place to start. So our next ingredient is some glycerin. This is vegetable glycerin. Now you want to put the glycerin in because it serves it as a humectant which draws moisture to the skin but it's also an efficient emollient and it will soften down the beard or the, or the hair and it will make sure that you are leaving your skin smooth and moisturised but you're getting that effective barrier between the skin and the razor blade. Now what we've got here is I'm just going to do the calculation for my fragrance oil. The fragrance oil I'm using is from Randall's Candles and it's called Invictus. But in any recipe in the UK you can only use up to 3% of your um, fragrance oil in a soap as long as the um, amount that you can use as a maximum from the company on its uh, information that you get from them is 3%. So uh, what I've got here is I've got the liquid that I'm using which is 175.55 grams. I've got my dual lye, which comes out to 82.6 grams, and my oils equate to 461 grams. And we add all of those together. Now, I'm putting some glycerin in here, but I'm not including that in my calculation. So the Cat9 um, percentage of usage for this particular fragrance oil is 17.14%. So I can go up to 3% quite happy on this one. And as the UK max is 3%, that's what I'm going to use. Because I'm not adding the glycerin into this calculation, it's actually going to be under that 3%. And I like to do that just because I can make sure that I'm well within the specifications of the fragrance oil that I'm using. And that I can make sure when it goes through my um, through to my, my chemist that they know that it's going to be well under that. So we've got 720.12 grams of the final um, batter, but that's not including our glycerin. So what I want to do is take my 720 grams and I want to multiply that by 3% or by 0.03. So if you multiply by 0.03, that is 3% of the entire batch. And when I do that, that gives me a final calculation of 21.6 grams. So I'll go for around about 21 grams with the additional glycerin that's in there. That's going to be well under my 3%. So we've got my, my fats melting there in a slow cooker and this is on high at the moment. But what I want to do is I want to get those all melted. Now stearic acid does melt at quite a high temperature and I need to make sure all that stearic acid has been melted. But I want my oils at between 71 degrees C and I believe it's 76 degrees C. So that's between 160 degrees Fahrenheit and 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I want my lye solution to be at a temperature of around 65 degrees C, not 150 C, 65 C I believe it is. And we're going to take that through to 82 degrees C, um, which is between 150 Fahrenheit and 180 I think it is. So you want your oils and your lye to be within those ranges because it's going to give you the best um, chance of success with this because this is a hot process soap that we're making. 
So we're now going to move on to making our lye solution. Now I always start with the potassium hydroxide purely because um, it can pop and spit at you. This particular batch I've got didn't do that, so that was great. We're going to start with our potassium hydroxide and then add in our sodium hydroxide and again stir until clear. So we get to the point where we're going to combine both the lyes and the oils. We're going to combine it in here and as you see as I pop this into the oils it immediately reacts where you with like a, a cold process you don't get that. Here it is reacting immediately with those oils and it makes this kind of mushy, it almost looks like it's gone bad and that something wrong has happened. It hasn't. Stick with it and everything will come out for the best. Now you might find that it'll take your mixture like it did here a minute or two to kind of come to a nice homogenous mix or depending on the oils that you use and if you change any of the oils up you might find that it may become instantaneously homogenized but just kind of stick with it and it'll it'll come to this point where it gets really thick and really kind of of uh, mashed potato -y basically so this is the first stage of, of when you do hot process soap that you're looking for um, but this comes together quite quickly and we're just going to keep mixing it and just make sure that we get all the oils incorporated with the lye and then we're going to kind of start to cook this out. So I am alternating here by stirring with the stick blender and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just lift it up and down so I'm again combining everything together in the crock pot here. I just need to replug that in and then we're going to just keep going with it and you can see how this is really thickened up and it looks an absolute mess and an absolute state but stick with it. It is going to come together it will make the most beautiful shaving soap. You just have to have a little bit of faith in the process. So now that it really has thickened up, we're going to move from the stick blender. Now look at that, it's kind of all stuck in the, in the bell there. It's fine, all of that's going to be reincorporated, don't worry too much about it. Um, so we're going to move over to a spatula here and again just, we're just going to incorporate that one, just making sure you're scraping right down into the corner in the bottom of the uh, slow cooker because you may get some stuck in the bottom and you don't want that to burn so you want that to kind of come back up to the surface and I have dropped my temperature down to a low here um, just to make sure that it's not going to burn underneath. Now let's just keep stirring this and you can see how this is um, kind of white and fluffy. Um, there's a little bit of oil on the surface. What we're looking for is it to kind of turn from being that colour to a nice shiny, almost kind of translucently again Vaseline stage um, of cooking. Now at this point it could take 10-15 minutes. So once we've gotten to this stage and we've turned everything down we're going to add in our additional ingredients which will be our glycerin which is coming here. Um, so we're going to pour all of that in and once this goes in you will notice that things will start to loosen up a little bit. Adding this at this stage is great and we're just going to carefully incorporate that all in and it will loosen it up a little bit and we'll start to get a nicer looking batter at this stage. So as you can see there, it started to make it a thinner base. It started to make it um, a little bit more glossy. But again, we just want to get that all stirred in properly. The addition of that glycerin is going to cool this down. So we can go ahead and put our fragrance oil in after this because it will have cooled down past the flash point um, for me. Um, but also if you're if you're flashing a little bit off, I don't think it's going to matter with something that's going onto the face quite close to the nose or um, it's just meant to be kind of like a barrier for when you're shaving. So you don't want it highly scented, um, but there is a little bit of fragrance in there. But again, we're just making sure that is going in. And can you see that it's now starting to, to change colour a little bit? It's getting a little bit darker and it's starting to kind of get a little bit shinier. That's what we're looking for. But again, just make sure you're scraping everything up from the bottom. You'll see little white patches appear every now and again as I'm pulling stuff up from the bottom and incorporating that glycerin in fully. Next we're going in with our fragrance oil and again this is just going to loosen the batter down another stage um, and it's just going to allow us to fully incorporate that fragrance oil and it's still cooking at the moment because we're on a low temperature on our slow cooker and as you fold this in again you'll see another change in the batter and it'll go from being this kind of um, mashed potato -y bit to kind of coming back to a nice homogenized batter that is pourable but it just looks right and you'll know when it's right because it will look absolutely right. So you can see there it's just slowly coming together, it's getting better and better all the time we're stirring it 
And then all of a sudden it'll kind of become this beautiful soap batter that you can then get into your mold. So we'll just keep stirring that in, keep stirring it, keep stirring it. And you can see again, there's another change. It's getting darker. It's getting more, it's getting less bumpy, less looking like mashed potato and looking more like Vaseline. And this is at actual speed. So you're watching it in exactly the same time that it would. We're getting a little bit more of a kind of not necessarily a volcano, but it does look like it could be volcanoing. It, it, it isn't, but it's always worthwhile just giving this a good stir. I like to stir it like this because it's only going to be like 10, maybe 15 minutes, um, and it will just give you a far better batter in the long run than just leaving it to cook. This is not a full like hot process cook. It's a it's just getting it enough so that it sets up and we're going to give it a full kind of setup for 24 hours afterwards. But again, notice how it's changing. It's going from that mashed potato, -y, that apple saucy right through to a Vaseline and it's completely changed consistency. It's gone more gel like it has become this beautiful looking. Clean, homogenized batter from all of that bumpy stuff. So again, you have to trust the process. You have to just keep stirring it. You have to just make sure that you're with it the entire time. It's 10 minutes or so. And then we've got this really nice, fluid, hot process batter that we can now get into our mold. So I've got a, a nice column mold here, round column mold, um, and it's around about seven centimeters in diameter. Uh, my batter has got this really nice kind of gloss to it, nice shine. It feels homogenized. It feels really nice. And all we're going to do is now get our batter. Again, it's quite a hot pot because it's literally just come off the heat and we're going to pour in our batter into here, give it a tap down and then leave it for around about 24 to 48 hours to fully saponify. Um, because it is a, a hot process, it has cooked through and I did test this and it was a lovely kind of like nine on the uh, on the test paper. Um, but again, I like to give it a day, maybe two days just to make sure that all of that's done before I cut it. So we're going to cut this on the multibar cutter. Um, now I get my mold here. I actually got this as um, part of the price from the uh, Soap Challenge Club, and it's from a company in the US, but it was something I always kind of wanted was one of these big molds. So it was kind of the, the right time to buy it. Um, it splits in half like that and I use and it comes with those clips so you can clip it together. Now you can see I've got a little bit of a ridge there, which I'm just going to take a little knife. And I'm going to pull that through like that just to take off that little ridge. Um, we've got a little divot in the in the bottom, in the top there, sorry. And you basically cut that off and I use that as my kind of like spare bit. And that's what I'm going to test for you in a little bit so you can actually see the lather happen. So I'm going to get that lined up right in the on the little thing there. And I love these cutters because they have that little lip. You can cut square or round soaps on it very efficiently, very effectively and get some really nice bars out of it. So let's just push this through. And again, it's going to be fairly soft soap, so you don't need to push too hard, but just push consistent, consistently and make sure that you keep an even pressure as you push through. And that will save you from kind of dragging, scraping, having any kind of stops and stuff through the bar. It just makes life a little bit easier. Um, if you're wondering what is on the back of my gloves there, I do try and reutilize my gloves as much as possible. If I get anything like that, what I'll do is just swap the gloves over. So anything that I was touching is on the back of the glove rather than on the front of the glove. And the really nice thing about these bars is because they are a dual line, they are slightly softer, which is what you want from a shaving soap, it personally speaking. Um, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to bevel the edges. You can just use your hand in order to bevel the edges quite nicely. So these soaps have been sitting out for a couple of days now, and you can still see they're relatively soft. And rather than using the vegetable peeler that you can see in the background there, I'm actually just using my fingers to round off that edge and make them nice and neat and tidy. So this is one of the lovely things about a dual lye soap is they do stay relatively soft, but firm enough for you to be able to handle them. But it does mean you can clean up those edges really nicely without losing too much of the soap. Um, and then they'll wrap really nicely in some coffee filters or things like that in order for you to um, to sell them. Now, here we go with a lava test and I'm using a relatively cheap uh, brush here. And from the outset, I've just wet the brush down and I'm making uh, round motions into the soap. And you can see there we're getting a really lovely lather and some really good close foam bubbles. 
Um, so there we go. And you can see that's just bringing up those beautiful kind of bubbles into the soap itself. And then what we'll do is we'll pop the soap down in a second. We've got enough of it on there. So look at that lather, lovely white tight bubbles. Um, and that's the steric acid, just making sure we've got this really nice lather. And then if I just squeeze out some of the bubbles here in a second, you'll see that the lather itself is absolutely beautiful, thick, rich, and it lasts for ages. And it's really worthwhile giving some shave soap a go if you've uh, if you've never done it before. So here is our final soap. Um, and just look at that. That foam on the brush there is the foam from that soap. And you can see how stable it is and just how beautiful that looks on screen there. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and allows me to make more videos and tutorials for all of you. When you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon if you'd like to get notified when a new video is uploaded. And thanks a lot, Soapsters. I'll see you again next time.